Rashwan Abdelbaki is an award-winning Syrian visual artist who has been based in the New York area since January 2017. Arriving in America just one week before the Trump administration's travel ban was put into effect. Rashwan joins me to discuss his experience immigrating to the United States of America, his home country of Syria, and how his identity as a Syrian artist based in America is reflected in his work. Thank you very much for joining me, Rashwan. I really appreciate it. How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. Thanks for having me. Happy to be with you. My pleasure. So let's let's get right into it. You are Syrian and yes. you arrived one week before, let's call it what it is, the Muslim travel ban. It is what it is. I don't care what anybody says. Does it make you feel like you're lucky? Do you feel guilty that others were left behind? To be honest, I didn't understand the travel ban in the beginning. It just, for me, it's just like a, a decision from the government. And uh, it's against uh, seven countries, uh, including my country. So I didn't, I didn't understand the, the impact from, from the travel ban exactly. But the foundation, the Institute of International Education, Artists of Production Fund, uh, the people who offer me this uh, fellowship and brought me to New York, of course, in the beginning to the American Academy in Rome and after that to New York, they asked me to like rush, like come uh, to the to New York before the trouble ban. And when I, when I arrived, I start here from people live in New York, how much horrible that the trouble ban against me and other country. Actually, I felt the, the impact from the trouble ban after a couple months when uh, my lawyer asked me to uh, now time to change the visa. Uh, in that time, I had J1 visa and I had to change the visa. And uh, he suggests you have two choices or asylum file. And I said no. And he said the other choice is the O1 visa. If we get the O1 visa for you, you have two problems. First, uh, you can't work other job. You will work as an artist. So uh, this is what you can do and uh, make shows, uh, sell work. And you are not able to leave the country like even to Canada. So in that time, I started feel the, the bad impact from such a, a racist and stupid decision, actually. So, so did you change to an O-1 visa? I did. Do you have a green card now? You- now I have a green card. I just got my green card last uh, November under, under the category people with extraordinary ability. You won, right. How did the process of you being an artist in Syria translate into, I have a visa to come to America? I, I didn't plan for it like or, or think about it. I just applied for a fellowship. So I was one of the other first seven to get this visa. And Alison, the art director, called me and she said, Rashwan, your fellowship is going to start from the American Academy in Rome for four months. And after that, you came to New York uh, to follow up your fellowship. So, I mean, the feeling was fantastic. I'm coming to New York. You know what I mean? How did reality of being in New York as an artist differ from what your thoughts would be? It's a mix from everything. People like me, we will see New York in the movie, which is not the same in reality. But still, like, there's the soul of New York. Like, it's fantastic. Like, all the time I have this feeling about New York. Like, I feel like, oh, my God, I'm, I'm in New York. You know what I mean? So uh, were, you, were you in Damascus originally? My work was in Damascus, yeah. What was it like on a day-to-day basis living in Syria, in, in a country that's been at war for? In Syria, in general, it's a peaceful country, you know, and it's cheap. Many people, they would came to visit several times. The country was in music and theater and light everywhere. And in one year flipped, everything became like uh, upside down, violent and uh, no security. Uh, you are afraid from everywhere, you know, like because you don't know if you are coming back alive. Was there ever a time when you felt, I may not live tomorrow? One time I was in Damascus and, and this mom uh, just fell down in the, in the next street while I'm taking my car and I remember the, the sound and I'm talking about the, the middle of the city. So I just remember the sound because when this bomb come close from the sky, just you will hear this this tiny, tiny sound and uh, you have second to move. But that doesn't mean maybe you will save your life if you move. You don't know where to move to. Yeah, you don't, yeah. know, you don't know where the bomb's going to go. 
Exactly. Do you feel like living during a time of war that there's some sort of trauma that you still carry with you or you feel guilty that you're here and you've left others behind uh, in a dangerous situation? Actually, yes, a little bit. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. I still have a friend that they still have family there. I feel guilty sometimes that I'm not with them. But in the same time, it's a future. I owe that for my life and my art. And uh, that's why I left. You were able to apply somewhere and get a visa to come to America. How did you know from this small town in southern Syria what to do? I didn't. That's why I'm, I was lucky. The fellowship found you? Yeah, it was full of grant for one year. Why do you think of all the extraordinarily talented artists in the world, they found you? I think just I'm lucky. But even if you are uh, extraordinary, it doesn't matter. Sometimes you will get rejected. So I don't know why. It's it's hard to get the visa. Were you able to sell art in Syria during a war? Uh, actually, in Syria, it's, it's hard because the country, it's more to produce art than selling. But uh, yeah, there is a few gal galleries they were able to sell some work. People are going to find this maybe surprising. You know, you come from Syria. They had a Muslim ban. Yeah. You're not Muslim. I'm not. <laughs> what are you? My family are Druze. Druze is it's one of uh, the minority in Syria. We are less than 1% percentage in the population in Syria. Usually Druze, they located in mountain. It's a kind of in their history to live in the mountain. And because they are few, so... In this way, maybe they protect themselves and somehow <laughs> uh, they have different practice. They believe in God. We believe in uh, in all the prophets, in Muhammad and Jesus. It's separate religion, yeah. Did you have friends who were Muslims? Oh, many. Uh -huh. Many, yeah. So not every Muslim was against every Druze? This is a joke. You know what I mean? Like, and That's what you see in the news. Yeah, this is the stereotype. There is one billion Muslim in the world. Uh, if there is one million tourists, that means 0.0001 percentage of all these people, these people like they're radical or, or whatever. This is not a problem. It's just that, like, you know, like it's just joke. Islam is not like this. And I have many Islam from Muslim friends. My best friend now live in Spain and he's Muslim. Let me explain it, how, how these people find a way. First, Many of them, they take advantage on poor people and they offer them money because they don't have money. And that's how they recruit them, you know, or use them. They make them be afraid. If you didn't do that, we will kill you or kill your family. So it's a joke to make a story about a whole religion just for radical group. And you can see this radical in every religion. What do you need to put Syria back together? There's a lot of countries involved. There's a lot of militias involved. Everybody's got a little part of there. There's like a lot of different groups there. How, how do you put it all together? It's complicated, but I mean, if you will ask me what's the solution, leave Syria alone and they will find a way. Turkey's in there, Russia's in there, US is in there. All, Israel all, is part, you know, Lebanon, ha Hamas is in Syria. Everybody's in Syria. Many countries involved in, in the Syrian story. And once they leave it alone, I think they will they will find a way. Let the Syrian decide what, what they want. If you are able to help them, so help them. Stop thinking about your benefit and think about the Syrian. Do most people want to leave? It depends. Some people, they will never, ever leave. Some of them, they are looking for a new opportunity. But no, there is many people, they want to stay, whatever is the situation. You know, their, their homes there and, and they have family and they have kids. So let's discuss your art a little bit. You work in the medium of printmaking, acrylic on canvas. You are obviously have extraordinary ability. The U.S. government, USCIS says you have extraordinary ability. You've reached to the highest level, the top of the top. And you have this recurring character that comes throughout all of your art. It's a face, one person. It looks like they're either blinking or their eyes closed. What is that all about? My work in the beginning, it was different than painting or the acrylic on canvas. I started this new uh, concept. After the war, I came up with uh, a character. I called it one open eye, one close eye. Um, what I'm saying as a human, since we were born, we have fears from family, fears from society or community, fears from religion, from God, from government, from politicians. 
we spend our life to jump out of our fear or find a way to heal from our fears. So I'm saying, because all what we are witnessing now with the violence, with war, I'm saying that we can't sleep in peace. We can't close both of our eyes. We need at least one open eye all the time to be careful. And, and what does your work melting represent? I started this one when I applied for my green card because you know how much is, it's a long-term process. I'm saying that this character or waiting make everything melting. Uh, the only thing it's still obvious is the open eye. And I came the idea because when I applied for my green card, I was asking myself, who is the guy who will decide that I don't know where, where he is or she is? whether rush one will get the green card or, you know, or not. I'm going to tell you something. That's a really amazing point. You have this unknown person. Exactly. In an unknown location that you don't meet, that you don't know. You don't know their name. You don't know anything about them. And they decide everything about your life. Your life changes completely if you're not granted a green card. Exactly. So I did this the painting I called them melting. So I just draw the character while the, all the details is melting and stripe became like a barcode because I felt like I'm just a number, like I'm a barcode. I'm checking my visa status every day. I, I will just tape this number and I will see if there's any update for my file. After I get the green card, I start to do the opposite. So I said, I'm going to be optimistic now. Uh, I have my green card now and I want to do something different. As I became now part of this community, I want to do a series uh, uh, called Three Years in New York, it's just a sketch of the character, one open eye, one close eye. And, and I want to repeat it in different work. And in each work, I want to talk about one of the events that I witnessed since I came to the US. From the wall to the visa, to uh, a Mueller uh, report, to the mass shooting, to the coronavirus, to the executive order from the former president, Mr. Trump. So you have in your art, your journey to America, your immigration journey. Do you have advice for people who are also right now struggling with their immigration issues? Oh my God. I, I mean, I, uh, the only advice is just they need to have patience. Otherwise, overthinking will drive you crazy. So here's the thing. So I was really upset and disappointed from the travel ban. And after that, I get the O-1 visa. So I felt, ah, oh, this is the hope. I got my O-1 visa, so I can do it. And the O-1 visa helped me for, in one part, just for my art, that I'm able legally to do uh, shows and sell work. But I wasn't able to have a, a normal job. So I'm accounting completely on selling work to pay my bills which is hard. It's not easy. I'm in New York. The competition is very high and there's thousands of thousand talent artists here. So I decided to be like just optimistic and have patience and not overthinking, and not be angry. Now I'm working in, in a show called The Equalizer. By the way, for those who don't know, you, you, that's Queen Latifah's hit TV show, The Equalizer. And you are working as a set designer. They call me a scenic industrial. Uh -huh. And hopefully soon, once I take the exam and pass, I will become a scenic. But uh, but I'm working for a, a, a wonderful charge scenic called Emily uh, Gant. And uh, she offered me this job. And I'm so happy because I'm working with a lot of talent artists. And I start working and I joined the union. Now I'm, I'm a union member. Do you ever think back like, wow, where I was five years ago and now I'm working on Queen Latifah's on an American hit television show with famous people that I only saw at the news or on TV and here I am working with them. Oh, believe me, sometimes I don't believe it. It's just my reward after all this patient. Believe me, it's just... Because you ask, what's the advice? The advice is it's have patience because overthinking will drive you crazy and it will not be helpful. I hope people take what you say to heart because what you say is true and important. Oh, it's not easy to be optimistic and think positively, but I just try it and it's very helpful. Where can people find out more about your work? Follow you on social media. My website is my my name, www.rashwanabdulbaki.com. And all my social media, it's my, my first name and my last name, Rashwan Abdulbaki. And finally, tell me what your American dream is. 
I have believed in this nation. I love this country. And I think we are capable. And that's why I, I wish to see the U.S. not having racism in the U.S. This is killing the country. And having control for the guns to stop having mass shooting in, here in the U.S. Stop feed the, the fear mongering because it's not helpful. The problem is not the immigrant. And the problem in the system, although some people, they will say the system is broken. Actually, it's not broken. It's working in the same way that designed to work. I think we need to find a new way. There is a new generation in the U.S. They believe in their country. They believe that we are capable to do better. So very much, this is my American dream. It's not my American dream to have money and became the new uh, Jeff Bezos. <laughs> it's not. Well, Rashwan Abdelbaki, thank you very much. Congratulations. Quite a thank journey you. from Syria to thank you for having the green card. Congratulations on obtaining your lawful residence and congratulations on an amazing career that just flourishing and continuing. And thank, thank you, you so for coming on. Thank you so much.